Well, you can get it from the sun, from a tiny little pill, or from your food. And the more you get, the longer you live. Medical reporter Galen Tethero reports on the vitamin that could save your life. When a nasty flu struck California's Atascadero State Hospital, Dr. John Connell made an interesting discovery. I know my patients were exposed to influenza, but none of them got sick. Why? One reason could be that 30 of Connell's patients had been given vitamin D on a regular basis. That got Connell thinking more and more about the vitamin's benefits and safety. Child's never gotten into a vitamin D cabinet and gotten poisoned. They've that's happened hundreds and thousands of times with Tylenol or aspirin or other things. Medical writer Bill Sardi says if vitamin D were a drug, its benefits would make it the most popular ever. Because we're talking about diabetes and hypertension and bone diseases, osteoporosis and arteriosclerosis and cancer and autoimmune disease and it, the list goes on. Scientists found that list is so long because vitamin D actually regulates cells, systems and organs throughout the body. That works by turning your genes on and off, very, very basic function. So that, that's a very important fact about vitamin D that distinguishes it from any other vitamin. It's, it's a steroid hormone, it's in a class by itself. A major question and area of controversy regarding vitamin D is sun exposure. So health investigators hit the trail looking for answers. Doctors have observed that where there's less sun, there's more cancer, flu, and even autism. For instance, there's more of these diseases in winter, which has less sunlight. And there's also more of these diseases the further you get away from the equator because there's less sunlight the further you get away from there. Even here in sunny California, very few people get enough sun to make sufficient vitamin D in their skin for the best of health. Down in San Diego you can make it year-round, but even then in, in San Diego in the wintertime you have to go right out at solar noon. There's only about a two or three hour period where you're going to make any substantial amounts of vitamin D. But wait a minute, won't this possibly lead to skin cancer? Most sunscreen companies provide products that block the ultraviolet B or UVB from the sun. Those are the very rays you need to produce vitamin D in the skin. Now they admit the UVA rays that the sunblock lotions allow to get in are the ones causing the cancer. So they let the one that causes skin cancer in and they block the one that prevents it. Statistics show skin cancer rates and deaths have actually risen since the sunscreen campaigns began 30 years ago. Canal recommends keeping your time in the sun moderate. 15 minutes in a bathing suit during summer is plenty. You don't want to age your skin or cause damage from a sunburn. Not everyone agrees. The American Academy of Dermatology website finds it appalling that anyone in good conscience could make the claim that intentional sun exposure for any length of time is beneficial. Then there's the issue of darker skin, which naturally screens out more of the UVB rays that make vitamin D. Their blood levels of D are about half that of lighter skinned people, making a connection with the diseases that shorten their lives. Heart disease and hypertension and stroke and cancer are the same diseases that have been associated with vitamin D deficiencies. So it may not be surprising that vitamin D deficiency affects as much as three quarters of the populace, especially as winter takes its toll on vitamin D levels. That depletion could be remedied and possibly reduce the need for flu shots. Vitamin D activates your immune system, causes something to be formed called little peptides that kill bacteria and viruses without antibiotic resistance, without side effects. We can use it in very young infants and pregnant moms. And not only help fight osteoporosis, but strengthen teeth as well. Instead of using fluoride to harden our teeth so there's no soft spots where the acids can then uh, eat into our teeth and cause dental decay, we can use vitamin D. It's more appropriate. It's more natural. And D appears to boost athletic performance. There's just clear evidence, especially in the German literature, of uh, choice reaction time, uh, balance, uh, muscle strength, uh, endurance, all improve with vitamin D. Which may explain why senior citizens on vitamin D are less likely to fall and hurt themselves. And cancer? Sardi says in a new book that a major reason not to be so fearful about the disease is vitamin D. A key U.S. study in June found it provided a 60% reduction in cancers. Canadian Cancer Society immediately told all of their citizens begin supplementing with at least a thousand units 
of vitamin D. American Cancer Society, mum's the word. In fact, here is video of how vitamin D helps zap cancer cells, like the one to the right of the arrow. But two weeks ago, the National Cancer Institute released a study indicating vitamin D doesn't do much against cancer deaths. NCI normally prefers the type of study done in June, but Cannell says this new study fits their bias against vitamin D. Even at that, the new study did show the vitamin's effect on the number two cancer killer. The people with the highest levels had had four times less colon cancer than the people with the lowest levels. I think that's pretty important. So what's the best way for you to get the vitamin D you need? Not from food. Even fortified milk provides so little that it's trivial. Taking supplements is a far more predictable source than sunbathing, and the only source in winter for millions. Experts suggest the best daily intake is at least 2,000 units for most kids and 4,000 for most adults. Yet the government recommends only 200 to 600 units depending on your age. It's just the whole thing, when you think about it, is is just patently absurd. And the government's been recommending this now for ten years. They, they refuse to change their. They refuse to up. They refuse to even look at the science. Cannell says he and his wife have taken as much as several hundred thousand units for a few days when fighting off colds or flu. His usual daily dose is five thousand units, a dozen times what the government recommends for him. He finds it a religious connection. Here the Lord is saying that there's a system that makes this much vitamin D this quickly, thousands of units a day from sun exposure. And here's a government over here saying you only need a couple of hundred units a day. So you can sort of ask yourself, who do you want to believe? God or the government? Galen Tethro, CBN News.